Hi everyone, this is Kaptan Baha. I was recently in Wichita, Kansas for an ACCA 2020 event. So you might ask, what's ACCA? Let me explain. ACCA stands for Aviation Content Creators Awards. So basically, a bunch of YouTubers that they create content about aviation. In there, my, the highlight of my visit was meeting Juan Brown, who's the host of the Blanco Liria channel. I had a chance to sit down with him, or actually it was a stand-up, and uh, chit-chat with him for a few minutes. Here's that interview. Enjoy. Hey everybody, this is uh, Baha and uh, from Captain Baha, and uh, I have a very special guest on my channel today. Somebody that I've been meaning to talk to for so many days, and good. part of the reason why I wanted to come over here because I wanted to come over and meet you. Ah, good, thanks, Randy. Juan Brown. Hey, thanks. Glad to be here. What a, what a great turnout today. It's about 110 degrees and 20 knots of wind. So we just got out of the beautiful Lockheed 12A flying that. So we're all soaked in sweat if you're wondering what this is all about. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that it's like 200% humidity too. Yeah, yeah. But what a fine piece of machinery that oh, Lockheed was, man. right? Very sweet flying airplane for 1930s design. Handled the wind and the turbulence here today just fantastically. Rock solid. I mean, yeah. I, I, I was asking the guy for the trim. He's like, you don't need the trim. Yeah. It's just like hand fly, but the, with the touch of your fingers. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. They don't make them that no, well anymore, huh? Anymore. Uh -uh. It was all, all that stability and smoothness was all done aerodynamically. No, certainly no computer assist or nothing uh, other than simple, pure aerodynamics of the era. Well, I thought that you were going to talk highly about 777, though. <laughs> well, that's another good airplane. Got you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's another long story. I might be switching over to the 787 when I go back to work here. Uh, I got my special issuance uh, medical, so I will be returning to work here soon, finally. Well, does that mean that we're not going to see you as many times well, on YouTube? Well, no, I think we'll keep rolling with it. We'll be able to keep rolling with it. Yeah. A lot of people think that you just started out, but that's not the case. I've seen some like very old videos of yours. Yeah, yeah. It's been I've been goofing around on YouTube for about ten years now, and it started out with motorcycle videos, and then the Orville Dam really put the thing on the map, and then everybody wanted to know more about the Luscombe and aviation. Once they found out I was an airline pilot, so I went that direction, and boy, it really took off. And now we're up over two hundred thousand subscribers. Yeah. What was the time that you ended up seeing like a lot of boom in your subscribers? Well, yeah, there's a couple of steps. One was first was this motorcycle, the CB five hundred X, doing the conversion on that. That got oh a couple thousand subscribers. And then the Orville Dam story, bam, that bumped it up to forty to fifty thousand subscribers. Really? And then talking about aviation disasters, that drop brought it right up to a hundred thousand and two hundred thousand subscribers. I gotta be honest with you. I started to watch your channel when you started to talk about the Max and all that mm -hmm, stuff, mm -hmm. and I could totally see you shaking your head when you were doing those videos, because I was shaking my head when I was reading the news articles yeah. about the Max story and all that stuff. Yeah, you want to keep your personal opinion out of it. You just want to discuss the facts as you know them so far. But sometimes the facts are just so astonishing that you can't help but get your own uh, emotion and wrapped up into the video. As a if if. If I was a professional videographer, I'd probably do a better job about that, but I'm not. I'm just reporting the facts as I see them and calling the shots as I see them. I think that's the reason why you got all those subscribers, because you just call it as, as you see them. And, you know, you don't, I don't think that you, you're one of those people that have started, like, um, an aviation channel so that you can get free Bose headset or free headsets and all that stuff. I should not mention the name. <laughs> I'll cut this part out. But you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. for sponsorship mm -hmm. and all that stuff, you have uh, your Patreon stuff going on. Mm -hmm. yeah. How's that working out for That's you? That's a good way to go because YouTube ad revenue is so unstable. You have no idea what it's all automated. You have no idea what they're going to um, monetize, what they're going to demonetize when you're dealing with disasters. Uh, mass casualty events that's going to be automatically demonetized so your monthly revenue is just up and down and all over the place patreon helps stabilize all that and it gives folks that uh, really like your work an ability to contribute towards you continuing your work on, on a you know like a dollar a month two dollar a month five dollar a month sort of basis and it yeah. evens out the uh, monthly income and allows you to continue to produce more and more content without so you, relying on the YouTube ad revenue. So you're not going to get any Ferraris or anything no, like that because no, no, it became so popular in right, YouTube? No, it's not like that. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a hobby sort of business. It's, <laughs> it's not something you're going to retire from early. And YouTube ad revenue just 
on its own takes massive volumes. It takes millions of views just to make a, a little bit of money. And so it, you got to constantly feed it too. You can't you can't just make a video and post it and, and expect a lot any a lot of revenue off that. You just got once you get this ball rolling, you got to keep going. You got to keep going. Mm -hmm. So since this is a you know aviation content creators uh, award mm -hmm. event, we're mainly talking about the YouTube and all that stuff. I'm sure people are going to ask a lot of questions about you, about your flying and everything. Mm -hmm. I guess what we can do, we can just tell them to put a comment that down below, and then maybe we'll do the next meeting in Zoom or something yeah, like yeah, that just keep and in touch and that's you know we'll we keep in touch collaborate out here and that's that's been the really fun part to meet everybody personally and all the fans out there there's hundreds of fans out there that you you, you put these videos together and you wonder is anybody watching these speak things speak for yourself Juan <laughs> <laughs> and then here there well come on Baha, uh, your I don't I don't see anybody <laughs> going like hey look that's hey, Baja going <laughs> oh, look, here's your there's Baja folks <laughs> I appreciate it but anyway so what's next for you if you're gonna go back to flying you're gonna keep doing videos are, are we gonna see more of the same or are you planning on doing some different stuff too uh, it'll be more of the same uh, we'll be continuing the the major interest is in current aviation events especially regarding accidents and accident investigations so I'm going to continue with that um, we're also going to be show, showing more of the story of a return to work after a long period off I've been off for a year now and what I'm really excited to do is talk more about if I switch over to the 787 I want to share what I learned about the 787 with everybody as I as I go along and learn all about that aircraft that, that would be fantastic because I know that it's a fantastic aircraft I don't know any well you don't know but I actually worked on the 787 project really? as a contractor in Boeing but I was an IT guy before this was what I did when I got furloughed from airlines in 2008. Uh -huh. But it was an interesting project, but you know, I was shaking my head during that time too because really? of the stuff that I was seeing Jeez. inside oh, and all that boy. stuff. Ah. But oh well, I mean, it worked out great at the end. It's a fantastic machine. Good. And I think oh, all the friends of mine that are flying it, I think they love the airplane. Like, yep, yeah. Hopefully you'll love it too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's got a lot of new technology that makes it a lot more efficient and a lot more in environmentally friendly as far as not only the environment but for the pilots for the crew yes. inside the aircraft a, a, a lower pressure altitude a little more humidity uh, not using bleed air for example to pressurize the aircraft so uh, a healthier working environment awesome I love it well I'm looking forward to it thank you so much for for your um, time because right. I know that your time is limited in here because people are lining up to meet you and they're just kidding. <laughs> we you have don't a lot of airplanes it. to fly, man. There's but yeah, we have a lot of airplanes to, to fly and I have to fly out today to go back to work. So yeah. I wish I could stick around for the whole weekend. Yeah. But pleasure meeting All you right, on. you too. Finally we'll be Baja. around. Take right. care. Bye-bye. See, <laughs> See you here. <laughs> Thank you so much, All man. Right. I appreciate good. it. Good fun.